the the entire ridge on the chinese side is littered with dead bodies i think it has to be the biggest failure of my life and you're you know risking a life that you have in the city you are uh, having your own uh, battles with your family to do something like this to pursue it and then you climb there and you're like dude i'm not feeling like <laughs> a champion i'm feeling like a bloody fake i felt like a fake pure world mein main ek lota banda tha jo sabko wo suit mang raha tha who would be like doing this you know on, on like climbing everest right no human till date in 2015 or 2018 when i submitted lotsi hmm. had ever climbed a mountain without wearing animals without using animals like i was taking my thumb and i was like bam bam hitting it into the snow wall so that you could feel something and i couldn't feel anything and these hardy folks the sherpa people or the sherpa climbing guides they come there and they carve out an entire base camp out of this glacier the entire platforms to pitching the tents to cooking the food to boiling the water carrying the weight carrying the weight every single thing is done by the sherpa guides at four camps but is everest a dream that is possible for everyone financially never ever take a loan to climb a mountain so my wife is calling me and she is like kuntal there's only 34 rupees in your bank account like i can't even use a debit card main kahan se payment karu kya karu in this episode we have explored the various dimensions of mountaineering approaching it from a physical mental emotional and financial standpoint and also the kind of hurdle one faces how it impacts their psychology and uh, what kind of preparation does one really need to scale their individual mountains in their lives their individual mount everest in their life watch the episode for more Welcome to the Journey Within podcast with me Shobha Rana. This is a podcast where we deep dive into the personal growth journeys of our guests, uh, people who have gone through a process of self discovery and transformation. Through their experiences, the life that they have lived, they have gained certain lessons. Those can be really powerful in helping us take our journeys within. These lessons can help us understand our inner world and in fact master our inner world. Today on this show with me I have got a mountaineer a humanitarian a vegan and of course a splendid human being let's meet Kuntal Joysha on the journey within podcast Hi Kuntal how are you Good good how about yourself I am great Kuntal and even better after meeting a champion like you Kuntal you have scaled Mount Everest the mighty Mount Everest not just once but twice right and you're also the first vegan climber to do so 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 let me cut you there uh it, now there's no one like you said that I'm the first vegan in the world to climb Everest and sure you know a lot of people call me that but at the issue here is that there's no body or there's no one really tracking whether I am the first vegan in the world to climb Everest like this is not like a record keeping thing um uh, there have also been claims before me uh and there have also been some you know people saying hey you are not the first vegan in the world to climb everest but look uh as as far as my research goes and from my beliefs around veganism i do not think anyone has climbed everest in the style that i have climbed from a vegan perspective so i honestly truly from my from my heart believe that i am the first vegan in the world to climb everest but truly speaking does it really matter at all like i i am not here to create a record i am the first vegan in the world to climb everest or maine ye to teer maar liya hai maine wo kar liya i am not here to do any of those things honestly to me i have climbed everest it was the biggest dream of my life and i achieved it and that is what matters to me it was a very personal journey for me yes veganism is a very important thing for me uh, it has been part of my life since last 21 years so it was important also to go and climb as a vegan and make a statement but honestly climbing everest was a calling climbing everest was a very personal and a very spiritual journey for me so i don't care if i was the first vegan i don't care if i was the 10th i don't care if i was the 1000 honestly i don't care so you can call me the first vegan in the world to climb everest and people can call me but i i really sure great it gives me the platform to talk about 
things that I'm passionate about that, you know, I'm getting a platform right now to talk to you and, you know, share my story. So to me, that is important. If people want to debate about sem semantics online, eh, whether you are the first, whether you are the second or who, I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. Right. Honestly, it does not even matter. Because there's a certain kind of preparation that you go with. And if being a vegan is a part of that preparation, because what you're eating, ingesting is also a large part of your preparation, at least the physical uh, preparation and endurance. And you're saying that you did it differently than how other vegans do it. So what is so different about your approach to veganism? Uh, look, for me, veganism is not just about food. For me, veganism is also about everything that I do. Uh, right from my clothing, right? So when you are climbing Everest, you require uh, people wear leather gloves, people wear leather boots, people wear feather jackets, people wear woolen sweaters, people wear woolen thermals, whole host of things. Mm. For me, I wore none of those things. Uh, for example, when people are standing on top of Everest, uh, temperatures could be minus 50 degrees Celsius, winds of 100 kilometers per hour could be blowing on top of Everest. And one of the most critical pieces of equipment that people wear is a one piece Himalayan suit that protects us in this crazy cold and this crazy wind and forever and ever this jacket has been made from feathers and if anyone knows feathers just don't grow on plants mm. right there are ducks that have feathers as their skin and unfortunately these ducks are slaughtered and their feathers are used to create these jackets so People are okay wearing these jackets and climbing Everest and then claiming that they were vegan. I was not. So in 2019, when I stood on top of Everest, I was wearing what I believe is the first ever animal free suit on the planet. What was your Himalayan suit or the Everest climbing suit made of, if not of feathers? It, it was made from recycled plastic bottles. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So nine, I would say about nine. That's mind boggling. Let me just take a second to process that. Recycled water bottles yes. made your Himalayan suit or the Mount Everest climbing suit, which usually is of feathers and other woolen stuff for other climbers Correct. because you are a vegan. Correct. How does that happen? Take me through that technology. Now I want to understand that. Because right. you know, I also uh, support recycling things quite a lot. Right. Sustainability is, is a big cause that I would like to champion in the years to come. Right. I'm taking my small baby steps towards it. Right. I am not yet there where, of course, you're talking from right. a very pro-level standpoint. So I have to do little steps like you can waste water in the bucket, put it in the bucket, wash it in the bucket, wash it in the bucket, and all of that. Those baby steps like you can recycle your waste, make it in the manure, and make it in the bucket. Those are very small steps that I'm taking. But yeah, this sounds like a quite an interesting... Uh, and who made that suit for right. you? Where did you find the support system that was like, okay, you're seeing this crazy dream? Dude, we are here to right. fuel this for you. Right. So I'll start from the start. Uh, in 2010, I found my dream of climbing Everest. And uh, I decided that, you know, I want to do it as a vegan. So I started communicating with a whole host of uh, agencies and saying to them, hey, I want to climb Everest as a vegan. And right out of the bat, there was a lot of pushback that Kuntal, you can't do it. Uh, no vegan has ever climbed Everest and you need to eat meat, you need to uh, drink milk, you need to eat cheese, you need to eat, you know, uh, all sorts of, you know, animal products. You need to wear leather, you need to wear wool. Nahi hoga. Absolutely nahi hoga. And I was sitting and I'm like, yaar, agar vegan ban ke nahi hoga na, to main ye karne nahi wala. Either I'm going to do it as a vegan or I'm not going to do so it at all. So you were going to give up on this big dream or goal that you've made for yourself. Ki mujhe Everest channa hai. You're okay to let go of that, but maintain your veganism. Yes, but I'm, I didn't start off thinking that I'm going to let go. Hmm. Like, I'm not that person who made a dream and this can't happen. I don't think this will negatively. This will happen and I'll do it. If someone hasn't done it, I'll do it. So my mindset was going on in that way. Mein chal raha tha. So... Then what I said is, okay, sab kuch figure out kar liya. Mene khana figure out kar liya. Mene gear figure out kar liya. Mene ye wo. Mene sab details figure out kar liye ki Everest ho sakta hai climb. As a vegan, mene meri training bhi shuru kar di. Sab kuch kar diya. And finally, I ran into my biggest roadblock of the vegan side of journey. Right there, there's too much to discuss about Everest. Uh, but the roadblock was that there is no synthetic or there is no animal free suit that exists on the planet. And I realized that this is going to be my nemesis for a long period of time. And so in 2012, I started writing to some of the biggest 
गैर कंपनीज और द गैर मैनुफैक्चर इन द वर्ल्ड के यू नो ये सूट आप मेरे लिए बना के दो द इश्यू इज दैट पूरे वर्ल्ड में पूरे वर्ल्ड में मैं एक लौता बंदा था जो सबको वो सूट मांग रहा था सो दीज कंपनीज लाइक नॉर्थ फेस माउंटेन हार्डवेयर दे ऑल स्टार्टेड गेटिंग बैक टू मी एंड सेइंग इट्स फाइनेंशियली नॉट वायबल द टेक्नोलॉजी डजेंट एग्जिस्ट सम बहन और द अदर दे गेव मी एंड दिस दिस इज नॉट पॉसिबल I wrote in 2012. I wrote in 2013. I wrote in 2014, 15. चार साल मैं लिखते रहा, लिखते रहा, लिखते रहा. सब लोगों ने ना ही बोलते रहे. And then finally 2016 came, and there was an opportunity to summit Everest. One time I made a decision of buying a feather suit, contributing. Oh, you were to, close. I was. Uh, I I bought the feather suit. I contributed to killing fair bit of animals. I wore that suit. I stood on top of Everest, and honestly, uh, if I am looking back on 2016 when I stood on top of Everest, I think it has to be the biggest failure of my life. And you will be surprised that I am Everest's top pick. But that's Me- you achieving your dream for the first time. You climbed it twice, so that was the very first time when you were on the summit, right? Yes. And you are calling it your failure. Why? Because I wore a dead animal on my body. and the promise that i made to myself that i am going to climb everest as a vegan or not do it at all i broke that promise i broke that promise i compromised with my ethics i compromised with my morals i compromised with my values and these are my values right i'm not standing here and telling you to go vegan or the world to go vegan i'm not doing any of that i'm not trying to take a moral high ground also here right these are my personal values and my personal ethics right and i compromised them for a dream i that is something that put me in a very tricky situation uh, post 2016 when i came home i was invited to many talks many podcasts all over the world and i was always introduced as the first vegan in the world to climb everest every time i went on the stage every time i sat on, on this chair with you know a podcast host when that statement was said mere zameer ke andar एक यू नो एक एक आवाज यू नो फेल्ट लाइक अ फेक आई फेल्ट लाइक अ फेक यू नो देयर इज दिस इनर वॉइस वी वर डिस्कसिंग यू नो दैट दिस इज नॉट 100% ट्रू एज पर माय स्टैंडर्ड्स एज पर माय स्टैंडर्ड नहीं यार यू आर नॉट द फर्स्ट वीगन इन द वर्ल्ड टू क्लाइंब जो जो दिमाग के अंदर एक सच्चा यू नो बैठा है ना एंड हम सब में ड्यूअल मल्टीपल पर्सनालिटीज है पर जो मेरा वाला जो मुझे हमेशा अकाउंटेबल होल्ड करता है दैट पर्सनालिटी वाज इंटरनली सेइंग यार तू झूठ बोल रहा है और ये भी सामने वाला भी झूठ बोल रहा है तो उसको ना भी नहीं बोल रहा है एक्चुअली दिस इज ऑल्सो रीजन ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ टर्मोइल इमोशनल टर्मोइल एंड द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दैट वी गो थ्रू बिकॉज समवेयर इन द क्वेस्ट ऑफ अचीविंग आर ड्रीम्स बहुत लोगों के साथ ऐसा होता है वी स्टार्ट कॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग ऑन आर एथिक्स एंड वेन यू डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन योर एथिक्स इट्स अ वेरी टफ जर्नी यू नो इट्स अ रोड दैट इज फिल्ड विद ह्यूमंगस चैलेंजेस एंड सम ऑफ द चैलेंजेस जस्ट कैन गो अवे इफ यू लुक द अदर वे you know like if you don't just hold this veganism so strongly in your right, case right. then and you look the other way theek ek suit hi to pehna i'm still eating vegan i'm still you know being vegan in every other possible way right it can just solve that problem for you completely but if you keep looking to it from the ethics perspective then your road becomes that much more challenging that is what a lot of people encounter in their everyday in, lives when right. they are battling or climbing their own personal everest right but to you know again like add to that point थोड़ा कॉम्प्रोमाइज किया अभी और थोड़ा कॉम्प्रोमाइज किया और थोड़ा फिर तो आप कॉम्प्रोमाइज करते रहोगे राइट एंड अगर मैं मेरे एथिक्स के साथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज कर रहा हूं तो यार मैं हूं कौन यार तुम तो यार फिर तो मेरा पूरा जो फाउंडेशन है मेरी लाइफ का वो हिल जाएगा एंड वो हिल गया था तभी राइट एवरी टाइम सम वन इन्वाइटिंग मी एंड टेलिंग आई एम द फर्स्ट वीगन इन द वर्ल्ड टू क्लाइम एवरेस्ट एंड देन मी कमिंग होम एंड नॉट बींग एबल टू स्लीप आपको लगेगा क्या छोटी बात है यार छोड़ यार क्या पकड़ के बैठा है यार पर मेरे लिए तो बड़ी बात थी यार वो दिस इज माय वैल्यू सिस्टम यार एंड आई कॉम्प्रोमाइज इट विद फॉर माय ड्रीम हाउ डिड आई डू दैट हाउ डिड माय ड्रीम बिकम सो इंपॉर्टेंट दैन माय एथिक्स डिड यू नो लाइक वर एबल टू टेक अ बैक सीट आई कंप्लीटली अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू नो कुंतल बिकॉज आई गेट दिस एथिक्स मोरालिटी वर्सेस वाइबल चॉइसेस इन योर करियर क्वेश्चन मेनी अ टाइम्स फॉर माई सेल्फ ऑल्सो वेर आई एम लाइक यून दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू स्टैंड फॉर बट दिस इज वॉट इज नॉट वाइबल फाइनेंशियली इट्स एज ऑफ राइट नाउ वॉट वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द पॉडकास्ट ऑल्सो वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ मल्टीपल चॉइस दट आई मेक इन माई लाइफ एंड आई गेट क्वेश्चन मेनी अ टाइम्स दट वाई डू यू हैव टू टेक द टफर रोड ऑल द टाइम 
but i believe that something that i stand for personally if i don't stand for even that then like what do i stand yeah. for yeah. what, what is the whole point of my existence yeah. Yeah. if i also do it like everybody else is doing that i'm also going to have the challenges that like everybody else is doing and nobody i think is having a great life so to speak that way so even if my life has its own turmoils right now at least those are things that i'm aware of and those are things somewhere that i've chosen for myself so i can maybe deal with the repercussions in a little better manner right. than owning into somebody else's life and then living with that guilt and guilt. that regret oh that's humongous <laughs> and i've tried it i've really tried doing it like you climbed once and you're calling it your biggest mistake sometimes even i compromise on certain you know benchmarks and parameters that i have for myself and every time i have done that i have regretted it so bad i can't tell you and it's always and it's Do you know that that feeling that's not leaving your physical body right. also at that right. time. Right. You know sometimes you know when they say I'm into events, I host events and stuff. So sometimes when I compromise on let's say one value, which could be let's say negotiating be- beyond a particular level because the if the scale of the event is so large that you don't want to miss on it, you want right. to be a part of it. Right. But I've hated every single moment of being on that stage. And it's very early on I figured out that dude it's not happening then i did something like that again so very early on i did these four five attempts and i realized that the job that i love so much it's bringing me so much negativity right. i am hating everything about it i am usually a person who doesn't care about a green room who doesn't care about if my coffee tea and all of these <laughs> things are on time i don't care a fuss if my mic is not operating properly <laughs> if the range is you know if the preparation is less and if right. the stage is not set and all of that i'm okay waiting long and all but when i do compromise on my value all of these things they they just keep you know PC means some man and then and then I'm projecting that energy on everyone else. Right. So am I like I'm neither a good resource for the person who hires me at that point nor am I at with peace with myself. With so it just makes zero sense to me to to compromise on the values. So I I applaud you for choosing your own path man because uh achieving your dream and that to such a big dream of putting everything at stakes because stakes are really high when you climb the Everest yep. right yep. you are putting in so much of money you are gathering so much of support right. uh, i want to talk about that story also and i'll come to this after that and you are uh, you know risking a life that you have in the city you are uh, <coughs> having your own uh, battles with your family to do something like this to pursue it and then you climb there and you're like dude i'm not feeling like <laughs> a champion i'm feeling like a bloody fake you know that's that's insane yeah yeah so and and you know you you brought this point about feeling guilty and so i also went through that that mode of almost a year of constantly you know constant turmoil constant guilt and then i'm like yaar main kya bacche ki tarah guilt ko leke baitha Right. Guilt is not the solution at the end of But the day. What was your guilt robbing you of when you said one year of you were everything? Right? right, like as you said that I was projecting negative energy all the time. I was toxic. My relationship with my family was, you know, in doldrums, and I was just. I'm like, yar, kya, kyun kiya, yar? Again, to an outsider, it may think, yar, bahut choti baat hai, yar, itna kyun pakad ke baith raha hai tu? But mere liye bahut badi baat thi, and it it impacted significant degree of my life. Hmm. and that's when i said yaar guilt is not the solution i really if if i want to do something then i have to build the first synthetic suit in the world right tumhare paas choice hai ya to guilt leke you know marte raho you know zindagi bhar you know isi turmoil mein ya to tum tumne jo wrong kiya usko fix karo right mere mind mein right so then i started writing back to all these companies again now this time instead of asking them to build a suit for me or give me the money which is what i was doing previously i just asked them yaar can you just you have synthetic material with you i see you are making synthetic jackets why can't you just ship me 5 kg of this material and i will build the jacket myself and ab main us ab main us level pe pahunch gaya hu but yet they were all saying no and this one friend comes and says why don't you write to this company called save the duck it's an italian company they are one of the pioneers of synthetic insulation in the world they are the ones who literally brought synthetic insulation so i'm like okay kya harz hai ज्यादा से ज्यादा ना ही बोलेंगे ऐसे भी वो लोग ना ही यू नो सब तरीके से ना ही सुनने मिल रहा है और एक और ना सही सो देन आई रोट टू देम फेसबुक मैसेज दैट हे कैन यू शिप मी फाइव के जी ऑफ योर इंसुलेशन एंड आई स्टिल हैव दैट फेसबुक मैसेज यू डेंट इवन आज दम कि मेरे लिए सूट बना के कुछ नहीं मैंने बोला मैं क्यों इतनी मगज मारी करूँ मैं खुद बना लूंगा टेलर तो है मेरे पास काठमांडू में सो मैं खुद ही बना लूंगा सूट देर चीफ मार्केटिंग ऑफिसर गॉड ऑन टू फेसबुक एंड रोट मी ए मैसेज कैन यू कॉल मी I'm like okay I'll call you so I called and they listened to my whole project 
and giada was her name she said that we'll build the suit for you wow and i'm like okay kahan tha itni sari na 5 saal se na sun raha hu na sun raha hu suddenly ek ha suna i'm like okay but then i still was like banayenge nahi banayenge you know yeah aise hi hero bhi pel rahe mujhe i'm like chal okay let's try you know so within days i was on a call with the chief designer of the company and 8 months of research and development later in april of 2018 as i was at everest base camp i was climbing lord see a sister mountain of everest i was holding the first synthetic suit of the world in wow. my hand a month later i submitted lord see on may 15 2018 i was wearing that suit and in my opinion i was the first animal free human in the world to have climbed an 8000 meter mountain forget everest no human till date in 2015 or 2018 when i submitted lotsi mm. had ever climbed a mountain without wearing animals without using animals so i became the first and when i was standing on lotse i could see everest right in front of me right they are sister mountain so everest is like stone throw distance away from the summit of uh, lotse so i was looking at it and i'm like now it's not the question of how it's going to happen now it's only merely a question of when it's going to happen because i am going to stand on top of the world and i'm going to stand on top of the world in the style i want to in without compromising on my ethics and so of course a year later i climbed from the chinese side and i stood on top of the world on 23rd may and i i think i was very clinical because i really wanted to be safe that year was a was a very disaster year 12 13 deaths on everest and i i, I was like agar main mara ya mujhe kuch bhi hua the headline of every newspaper in the world will be vegan dies on everest wearing a vegan suit we are under such a micro, microscope as vegans so i was like wo nahi hone dena hai but when i stood like you know wo smile tha face pe or you know ek main bolu na andar se you know that relief that satisfaction relief, that, that satisfaction contentment that yaar yaar ho gaya dream yaar aur koi animal ko marna nahi pada yaar mere dream ke liye kisi animal ko apni jaan nahi deni padi mere dream ke liye and i think that was like chalo yaar ab ab main na ab main ghar jaunga na to jo raat ki neend hai na वो शांति वाली आएगी इट्स व्हेन आई क्रिएटेड द फर्स्ट सिंथेटिक सूट ऑलरेडी काफी शांति वाली नींद आ रही थी बट दिस वाज लाइक द फर्स्ट टाइम क्या इंटरनल पीस जो मुझे चाहिए था ना व्हिच हैड लॉस्ट आफ्टर द 2016 क्लाइम आई रीगेन दैट पीस बैक एंड आई एम लाइक ओके आई आई एम हैप्पी नाउ आई एम आई एम जेन्युइनली फ्रॉम द बॉटम पार्ट ऑफ माय माय हार्ट हैप्पी एंड दैट आई हैव डन इट एंड या सो द इंस्पायरिंग स्टोरी ऑफ वर्ल्ड्स फर्स्ट वीगन हिमालयन सूट टू क्लाइंब द माउंट एवरेस्ट kudos i applaud to you this is such a powerful story and it also goes on to tell that when you have set your head to something right and you're really serious about it you will find a way and you will also get the right kind of help coming your way like your friend coming to you out of nowhere and telling you that yaar wo company hai wahan pe it's pe. almost like universe conspiring yeah conspiring matlab yahi to hai na wo jitni shiddat se chaho to puri kainat i was just going to say shahrukh khan ka dialogue you know like i don't believe in it but i'm like how did that happen how did out of the blue that person come how did out of the blue save that like decided they are going to you know bet on me or you know help me out with the suit and i'm like it just happened i mean it's a testimony to that sentiment you know that you should have the courage to ask the questions the answers will either come or will reveal themselves or the universe will conspire whatever else will happen you have to have the courage of asking the question till you find your answer because question nahi puchoge to answer aise bhi nahi ho raha aise bhi kuch nahi ho raha correct wo wo ek spirit jo hai na i think that is that is really really powerful and uh, having said so when you stay hung up on the question for years it sort of challenges you emotionally mentally also that you know am i really thinking something which is not viable uh, is it really okay to me to push it this far how far do i push what right. are your thoughts there so again i'll maybe maybe go back to the time when i like found my dream of climbing everest and i came home and like i announced it to my family like i'm a, i'm from a gujarati family a kachi gujarati family so the first reaction of my family my extended family was pagal the gyo sir you know pagal ho gaya hai tu totally i'm like okay this this 
अगर सबका ये रिएक्शन मतलब ये मेरा ड्रीम यू नो बराबर मैं मैं यू नो टैक पे हूं या दैट इज आल्सो अनदर पर्सपेक्टिव टू लुक एट इट अगर सब लोग पागल बोल रहे हैं तो कुछ गोल मैंने क्रेजी सेट किया है यू नो क्रेजी सेट किया है सो बट एट द सेम टाइम आई आई टुक अ स्टेप बैक एंड आई एम लाइक ओके राइट नाउ आई एम द डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंडिया ऑपरेशंस ऑफ अ बिग एमएनसी अ सॉफ्टवेयर एमएनसी सो आई आई कम फ्रॉम द सॉफ्टवेयर प्रोफेशनल बैकग्राउंड तो आई एम लाइक एम आई विलिंग टू गिव अप माय करियर बिकॉज given where i am right now i am i am a gujarati i was overweight back then 110 kilos near obese absolutely unhealthy what Mera- are you saying i can't even picture <laughs> you like that especially after the post that you have put up recently eight pack abs and a ripped body and all of that i think you're the fittest gujarati that i know <laughs> <laughs> so so mera family to aisa hai na ki agar ek floor bhi chadna hai na to wo log lift lenge और मैं भी ऐसा ही था बैक इन यू नो 2009 2010 जब भी मैं मुझे मेरा एवरेस्ट का ड्रीम मिला और दाल में चीनी डाल के खाएंगे दाल में चीनी डाल के <laughs> हर चीज में चीनी डाल के एवरीथिंग इज लाइक अ डेजर्ट आई वाज टेलिंग यू सो यू नो तो हमारा लाइक दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ बैकग्राउंड आई कम फ्रॉम सो द पॉइंट आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक इज दैट देयर वाज नो जेनेटिक डिस्पोजिशन टू बी एबल टू क्लाइंब अ माउंटेन लाइक ऐसा मेरे पास कोई जेनेटिक गिफ्ट नहीं था कि मैं पहाड़ चढ़ने वाला हूं right on the contrary actually genetically me bahut hi opposite tha so Correct. i had a lot of odds you know kind of that i had to battle so am i you know going to be able to go on a physical journey to turn this around am i going to be able to you know compromise on my career uh, will i be able to kind of so many you know in and even the family because the second time when you climbed everest that was pretty much the time when you were expecting your daughter how i want to also talk about the emotional preparation man because when you have a family and when you are going through such a phase with your right. partner where right. you are expecting a child and you are saying ki mai ye ekdam ek almost uh, crazy expedition pe ek bar to chala gaya wapas jaunga right. and this bar i am going to go with this uh, vegan himalayan suit pata nahi uska kya viability <laughs> bhi hai aur kaisa rahega ye journey but i am i am going tada bye bye so how does that happen right so so in in march so generally everest is climbed in april and may and march uh, of that year i got to know that uh, both of us are pregnant and uh, that you know we are expecting uh, and i'm like okay this you know adds a significant uh, pressure or you suddenly you know start looking at world very differently when you are bringing a life into the world so i'm like yaar bahut hi different ho gaya hai sab kuch abhi i went on the climb and for the first few days my sherpa guide uh, this is a sherpa guide's name is mingma tenzi sherpa uh, we started our expedition in april and for the first few days my sherpa guide could kind of sense there was something off because i was not my usual self uh, now, this was the same sherpa you had climbed with before i i have climbed with the same sherpa for practically entire career uh, his name is mingma tenzi sherpa he is literally my brother he is my father mother he is my sister he is my friend he is my guide he is my mentor he is my everything when i am on the mountain and he could like you know sense and so one of the days we were climbing to this area called the north coal and two of us were alone on the mountain like for miles and miles there was no one because we had like made good speed and we had kind of uh, gotten distance away and then he you know comes to me and says yeah this year you don't seem like yourself what's the heck is going on and then i like you know kind of hugged him tightly and i said that this is what is going on and he like was so happy so happy so happy he's like finally you know you are going to have a baby <laughs> because he knew that when i decided to climb everest i you know decided to keep every portion of my life aside सो ही वुड यू नो एवरी से यार अब तुम लोग की शादी को इतना साल हो गया है तुम लोग यू नो बच्चा नहीं कर रहे हो ये वो एम लाइक यार लुक राइट नाउ माई फादर इज अ पेशेंट ऑफ डिमेंशिया एंड ही इज द ओनली किड इन माई लाइफ एंड देन द अदर किड इन माई लाइफ इज एवरेस्ट वेन आई हैव टू किड्स हु रिक्वायर फुल टाइम डेडिकेशन एंड फुल टाइम यू नो मे लाइक उस शिद्दत से यू नो इंटरनल यू नो चीज से जिन दो चीज को अगर मुझे हैंडल करना है तो दूसरे किसी की जगह नहीं है मेरी फैमिली में या मेरे मेंटल स्पेस में या मेरे इमोशनल स्पेस में ऐसे सोचो मेरी वाइफ को भी वो इमोशनल स्पेस नहीं मिल रहा है जो उसको चाहिए एंड नाउ यू यू नो आई ब्रिंग इन अ थर्ड यू नो चाइल्ड इन यू नो दिस होल थिंग आई एम लाइक आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू इट बट ऑल्सो इन टू थाउजेंड न्यू दैट आई वॉज गोइंग टू गेट टू द टॉप नाउ लुक इट्स एट द एंड ऑफ द डे माउंटेन डिसाइड राइट लाइक एवरेस्ट डिसाइड करने वाला है कि मैं ऊपर चढ़ूंगा या नहीं चोमो लुंगमेंट इज गोइंग टू डिसाइड दैट मदर गॉड इज इफ शी वॉन्ट्स आई विल बी ऑन द टॉप 
if the mother goddess wants me home i will be home and uh, so when mingma was so happy i think he was far happier than i was <laughs> he's like are finally ye abhi life mein aage badhega you know ye he he will have something else in his life to look forward to so you know that all that all stuff was kind of going on the mountain but once that incident happened where you know mingma and i shared this because other than me and my wife really no one knew we had decided that we are not going to share with anyone and in plus you know i think some of the cultures until it's 3 or 4 months you don't even tell anyone that you are pregnant so this was only like few weeks and i'm like i have to tell mingma he mm. you know deserves to know this because he also both of us are partners on the mountain he needs to know what my mental space is right now what my emotional space is because that shouldn't impact how we are climbing and i think once i had that off my chest both of us were on like a like a roll on the mountain kuntal when you are climbing up the mountain mount everest your only companion probably there is your sherpa right like you said he is your friend philosopher guide sister brother mother father everything that person is really important to you right but still they don't get enough limelight as they should get right right so what are your thoughts there what do you want to say about sherpas right so if you look at everest right from building your entire base camp think of this as a long 1.5 km long glacier and these hardy folks the sherpa people or the sherpa climbing guides they come there and they carve out an entire base camp out of this glacier they work for relentlessly for maybe a month sometimes 45 days in that snow in that snow creating platforms on ice and rock where you can create massive camps you live in those camps and then you start climbing the mountain right from the base of everest to the very top of everest the entire route is found by the sherpa guides the entire route is prepared by the sherpa guides and by prepare i mean they fix ropes on the route all the way to the top every there are four camps in between the base camp and the summit of everest each camp is built by these sherpa guides the entire platforms to pitching the tents to cooking the food to boiling the water carrying the weight carrying the weight every single thing is done by the sherpa guides at four camps carrying all this amount of oxygen up the mountain i have literally seen my sherpa guide mingma tenzi sherpa once carry a bag of 55 kilos 55 kilos is literally his own body weight yeah there are sherpas carrying more than their body weight more than sometimes their body carrying weight. injured people down yeah sometimes yeah. carrying injured so they are doing every single thing on the mountain to literally sometimes when i reflect back i feel that all we have to do is wear our clothes and walk that 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 is literally what you know mountaineering is boiling down to these days they will literally even come and put an oxygen mask on your face they will even at an anchor point where you are going from a one rope to the next rope they will come and literally hold your hand and put it on the next rope that's the level of baby sitting that sherpas do today and yet people go and say that i climb mount everest we, we really need to stop saying i at least you know take one step and say we climb the mount everest we meaning you and your sherpa and in all honesty if i have to tell you the truth it would be an understatement if i sat on the shoulders of my sherpa and climbed mount everest that is literally what every single one of us is doing today on uh, on everest not literally but metaphorically sometimes even literally as you said you know people are being you know rescued yeah, where they yeah. you know the sherpa is literally putting them on their back and bringing them down and saving their lives right if there are any true superhumans if there are any true stars if there are any true heroes these are the sherpa people they are the heart and soul of all himalayan mountaineering in my mind they are some of the best mountain climbers that have ever existed on this planet on this planet and the difference between us and them it's it's like infinity i know we're not even what comparable. you're talking that, i can who, totally who agree to are. that huge and massive respect to sherpas i think they have only made these mountains accessible to human beings i mean they are also human beings but to us to the to the rest of the world uh, massive massive respect to them let me tell you a story about me and and mingma so we had reached camp 
Uh, now, Camp 4 is at 8,000 meters and 8,000 meters is also known as the death zone. 8,000 meters and above is also known as the death zone. Now, a lot of people ask me this question, why is it called the death zone? Now, there are multiple theories here. Uh, the first one being uh, some of the scientists over the course of years have figured out that above 8,000 meters, you are in such a zone where there is so little air pressure that the amount of oxygen available to your lungs is so low that you are literally living on borrowed time when you are inside the death zone. You are closer to your death than you are closer to your life inside the death zone. So, Which is why it's also called the death zone. But also over the course of last 75, 80 years of Everest climbing, more than 320, 330 people have died. And out of that, 50% of them have died in the death zone. So the death zone is also literally the death zone. Right? You see bodies there, dead this, bodies there. This, this is an area where there are easily about some 150 to 200 dead bodies lying. So Mingma and I, we reached death zone at about 4 in the afternoon. And then about 7.30, Mingma, I remember, you know, the zip opening and his face coming into my tent. And he's like, Kuntal, get ready. We are going to climb to the top of Everest now. Like it's 7.30 in the evening. 7.30 in the evening. So about by 9.30, I was ready because it, we were a big team. We were about four people in the tent and each one gets ready. And while you may think that wearing a shirt or wearing like just a suit and boots, how much time should it take? Sure. At sea level, it will take, you know, 30 seconds or maybe a couple of minutes. But when you are in the death zone, the most basic tasks can take 10 or 20 minutes. Like it took me just 15, 20 minutes to get ready. Tasks that I could have done 30 seconds at, you know, sea level. So that's how the death zone is. Your brain is working incredibly slower than it is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. The decision making is significantly hampered. Whole host of issues are, you know, happening to your body, to your mind, to everything. So about 9.30, both Mingma and I started walking towards the summit of Everest. I still remember about after 10 hours of climb, we were... We got stuck in traffic jam for almost six hours. You may be asking traffic jam, jam on Everest. Yeah. yeah. And traffic jam doesn't just afflict Mumbai. It also mm -hmm. afflicts Everest these days. Correct. So after about 10 hours, we were at this section called the Southeast Ridge just below the South Summit. And I remember after bypassing the traffic jam, I realized that I didn't have any sensation in my thumb. Like, like I was taking my thumb and I was like, BAM! Bam, hitting it into the snow wall. So that you could feel something. And I'm like, I couldn't feel anything. And I'm like, man, I'm going to lose this finger or what? And Mingma just caught up to me after bypassing the traffic jam himself. And he's like, what, what are you doing? This is, are you a madman or what? And like, Mingma, I can't feel my thumb. If, if, if we, you know, loiter around here more, I think I will lose my thumb. And if you cut your finger, you don't have to lose So I'm like, let's bail and let's go home. So Mingma is like, chill, you know, three years we have been coming here and now we are here. It's like one hour from here, you can't go home. So Mingma is like, show me your gloves. So he, you know, saw my gloves and a little bit of snow had gone in. The snow I think had gone. as we were kind of, you know, climbing through, I may have made a certain mistake where snow kind of went in. Slipped in, yeah. And it made everything cold. So before I could do or say anything, he removed my gloves. And I'm like, shit, I have Mingma, what is... Yeah, at that temperature. Before I could, you know, do anything, he removed his gloves as well and he put it on, on my hands. Wow. And I'm like, I could suddenly feel this burst of warmth in my hands. Mm. And then Mingma is like, clap as hard as you can, mm. as if you're clapping for your life and follow my pace. For the next 15 minutes... He walked at a very measured pace and I was like, if you would have seen me, pagal ho gaya. Hey, definitely ye satya gaya hai, you know. You're just climbing and, cl uh, and who, clapping. Who would be like doing this, you know, on, on like climbing Everest, right? You, you would see me from far, you'd be like, he's, you know, he's, he's hallucinating, it. he's lost it, you know, on the mountain. And it really happens. And which is very know? common also. We, so after 10, 15 minutes, just as he said, all the sensation returned in my thumb and it was feeling great. Both of us submitted Everest. I submitted in the $200 mittens that Mingma was wearing that were absolutely heated. And Mingma submitted in a $5 local glove that he had just purchased off some street. This is the kind of support I had 
that put me on the top of the mountain which is why i honestly feel when people say things like i conquered everest and no you didn't okay and no you didn't just as simple as that so i feel a little not little bit a lot of gratitude credit and a lot of to be credit given needs to, to be Sherpas. given to these amazing human beings who have a thankless job and one of the riskiest jobs on the planet and sure someone will come and say are 5000 dollar kama rahe ha main bhi tumhe 5000 dollar deta hu jao dekhta hu main tum kitna kisi ko guide kar sakte ho 8000 meter pe 50 kilo ka bag utha ke main bhi dekhta hu tum tumhare mein kitni you know paise to sabhi kama rahe hain there is no uh, but you know people always it. say these you know there are so many people who are out there who are who have this self entitled mindset where maine to khareed liya hai isko right ये तो मेरे ये तो मेरा सिया में स्टूडेंट है ये मुझे छोड़ के कैसे चला गया ये इतना भी आगे क्यों जा रहा है अरे भाई तुम्हारा शेरपा है वो भी ह्यूमन है उसकी भी फैमिली है तुम इल प्रिपेयर आए हो माउंटेन पे और तुम मर रहे हो तो वाई आर यू यू नो शेरपा तुम्हारे साथ सुसाइड मिशन पे नहीं आया है ना तुम सुसाइड मिशन पे आओ शेरपा थोड़ी सुसाइड मिशन पे आया ह्यूज रिस्पेक्ट टू शेरपा एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ क्रेडिट शुड बी गिवेन मस्ट बी गिवेन टू देम फॉर वॉट दे डू फॉर एनेबलिंग people like us to even dream of climbing a mountain as huge as uh, right. everest yeah with this crazy kind of passion that you're talking about kuntal and i can very well sense when you said your father had dementia and your uh, you know the other baby is your everest uh, goal and ambition you didn't have a room for a lot of other things in your life i want to talk from your wife's standpoint how does a woman stand with a man <laughs> like that who is just absolutely crazy about things and he's saying dude mere paas tumhare liye thoda kam time hai थोड़ा कम नहीं टाइम नहीं है तुम्हारे लिए टाइम नहीं है एंड व्हिच हैपेंस इन मोस्ट ऑफ द रिलेशनशिप्स व्हेन फॉर यू इट वाज एवरेस्ट फॉर अदर्स इट कुड बी समथिंग एल्स अ जॉब और एन एस्पिरेशन टू ग्रो इन देयर करियर इन सम वे व्हाट एवर यू गेट टू स्पेंड द लेस टाइम विद योर लव्ड वंस विद द पीपल हु आर मोस्ट क्लोजेस्ट टू यू दे टेक द मोस्ट ब्रंट ऑफ योर एक्चुअल पैशन यू नो आई वांट टू टॉक फ्रॉम योर वाइफ स्टैंड पॉइंट एज इन व्हाट वर हर थॉट्स ऑन यू परसुइंग टू climb the mount everest not just once but twice but and all the other mountains also and not have space for her and time for her in your life okay um we got married in 2007 december 2007 she married a, a software engineering leader who was making fair amount of money because i was working for a us based company so my salary was in dollars and i was making reasonable and you were still amount. living in india you were still living in india and making oh, wow, and earning reasonable in dollars? amount of money <laughs> kunsal you are rich man <laughs> <laughs> i was back then now <laughs> now that you're climbing every possible mountain <laughs> i know your savings are ta- taking a dip no they are not are non existent but we'll talk about that <laughs> later um so she w- was like you know he's a set guy we have a regular arranged marriage match i i was never into dating or any of that so it's not like uh, i was in love with her or anything we met once or twice and yeah sure okay chalo shaadi karna hai barabar time mein ho gaya that was that is the kind of person kuntal was in in from that you know in that decade uh, and then we got married and two years passed by you know things were all good finally i found my dream of everest and announced that i'm going to climb everest and that is where the whole uh, the the turmoil started yeah because when you met your wife for the first time it was an arranged setup she didn't know even you didn't know that you have a goal to climb everest a correct. lot of your goals evolved with time and correct. with each other correct right and it's not necessary that the pace and the path that you're evolving on your partner will evolve on the same path right. then how do you see eye to eye and how do they sort of align themselves to your path because if it is so big for you if it is like a part of your being like you feel it in your physical body but ye to karna hi hai mujhe to wo dusra insaan jo hai and you become the hero when you achieve all of that right you take all the spotlight right. but the other person who has stood with you right. and who has taken the most brunt she has taken frustrations that you have felt she has taken the preparation that you have done and the time that you have missed out on the family time she has right. taken the responsibility of your father being a dementia patient and he was uh, battling with dementia for nearly 19 years right, right. nearly two decades right. and uh, she was with you holding your family together all of that so i want to talk from her standpoint that how do you feel about it uh of making her a part of this whole thing <laughs> and how does she feel about being a part of your crazy dreams right um so the 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 first challenge was they were not they didn't want me to go climb everest right my wife wasn't that i'm not supporting your, my i'm not supporting a dream but i am just worried about your safety what if you die uh, on the mountain yeah. 
right? So that was one of our biggest concerns. But as you said, for me, this was my dream. This is a calling, right? This is something that you cannot not answer. You wake up in the morning and the first thought that enters your mind is Everest. You sit at the dining table and you have a roti and you can see Everest in the roti. You turn on the computer and while something's going on the computer, but you can see Everest. So all the time you are in Everest, Everest, Everest. If it's such a big calling, there is no way you can't answer. And so you have to answer. But as you said, it's easy. You know, this is me. I am going to be the hero. I am going to, you know, be finishing my dream. What about the other person? Right. So the first thing was sat, I sat her down. I sat my mother down. And I said, two choices hai. Ya to tum mujhe karne do Everest and you will get a normal kuntal for the rest of your life. Ya fir mujhe mat karne do Everest and you will get a zombie for the rest of your life. You decide which kuntal you want. And then you, you know, anyone viewers can see and you can, you know, also tell this is a form of great emotional blackmail. I'm not saying please do this to your family. <laughs> I would never do this to my family again. Uh, but I didn't know how to convince them. I had no clue what to do back then. And I was so, I have to tell you, I'm a very selfish person, person, okay? I feel most of us climbers are selfish. If any mountaineer comes and tells you they are not selfish, they are being, you know, dishonest. You know what, Kuntal, uh, I've had this realization very recently, and that was that all the people who follow the path of spirituality are somewhere very selfish people. You cannot be a spiritual person, you cannot be on that path if you are not selfish. I mean, <laughs> take Gautama Buddha for that example. He had a fully functional family, right. a full-fledged family, a kingdom to rule and all of that. But his quest of finding who he was or whatever questions that he ha he had on his mind were bigger than everything else. Yes. So you have to be selfish about that if you are on a spiritual path. So, you know, I'm also navigating through these, <laughs> these situations in my life and trying to understand that how much of it is being selfless, how much of it is being selfish, what is the difference between the two. Somewhere these questions and these definitions, now somewhere you start... You stop seeing that line of differentiation between the two concepts as two different concepts. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of a weird zone. But yeah. Yeah. So, so I was, look, I, I was being, I, as I said, I'm super selfish from that perspective, at least when it comes to my goal, or when it comes to my passion, when it comes to my dream. So family, of course, chose, you know, <laughs> the former Kuntal where, okay, jao, jo karna hai, karo, you know, achieve your dreams. But at the same time, I also ensured that I demonstrated to them that, boss, I am a kick-ass climber. Look, I'm, I'm, when did you become this uh, climber, this it took superhuman a while. It, climber? It, it took about four or five years of extremely dedicated training. Uh, if I look back upon the last 13, 14 years, I have spent more than 15,000 plus hours just training and getting ready for all my dreams and all my expeditions and everything. 15,000 plus hours is a long amount of time. Long, long, long amount of time. I want to talk about your training, Kuntal, uh, because you were this 100 kgs plus man who was like, listen, I want to climb the Everest. And then comes the training part, the physical, mental and emotional and also financial. Let's talk about all of these. Let's start with physical. How did you start uh, training physically for it? What was your day like? What were your days and years like rather? Right. So... Um, Physical fitness is the easiest piece out of physical, mental and emotional. I would actually rate physical, then mental and then emotional. I think emotional being the hardest uh, because physical fitness has a blueprint, right? You could literally just go online, find a plan. And if you are disciplined and consistent, and if you stay consistent for a very long period of time, honestly, you will see great. You will crack fitness. the code. Yeah. Right. So there's not, it is not rocket science that you can't really do it. Right. What does a muscle require? Like, let's say if I took up a dumbbell and you know, I'm just doing this. Right. And then I come back two days later, I do this again. Then I come back five days later again. And then I take a heavier dumbbell and I do this again and again and again with a little heavier, with a little heavier. And I continue doing this. If I continue showing up, I'll have a bigger muscle. Just end of story. Sure. I'm simplifying the journey because there's a fair bit of stuff that you still have to do. You have to recover. You have to sleep well. You have to eat well. Those kind of things. But I'm saying there is a good blueprint that you can follow. So my typical week, work week would look like where six days of training, which would be about three or four days of lots of hiking. 
at different variations right some of the hiking was very low duration but very high intensity in terms of my heart rate and then some of the hikes were very long duration but very low intensity in terms of my heart rate and then a couple of day, days of dedicated body weight body weight strength training this combined with reasonable nutrition practices allowed me to go from 110 to about 85ish or about 80 85ish so what i lost about 30 kilos or so i would not say i was overly muscular or had an eight pack or or had like a very muscular body or had like a very mountaineer style body but if i was on the mountain i can assure you i was better than most that i knew so it was mostly you know a tip that i'll give to all your you know audience is consistency and discipline there was no there was no magical plan that i had kuntal it makes so much more sense to train your mental body through your physical body because it is your physical body this is your vessel through which you experience the world so this is your only means possible through which you can experience things right. and you have to experience a sense of mental strength right. and if it can be you know clubbed with the physical body it's that much more powerful in your head also that's a great hack to <laughs> understand your mental boundaries and pushing past them pushing past using them. your body as a tool to see if i can go past this and that difference of you know where you used to do it and now what you have achieved Achieve. that difference the, the kind of high that gives you that is your sort of parameters to say that dude it's more mental now than physical for me right. physical to main kar hi lega na maine right. training kar liya itne saalon ka hai to 10 aur ho jayega viable mere liye but kya wo mentally mere liye monotony mein jana aur wo thought se battle karna how uh, is that playing out that's that's a great take on it kuntal now coming to the emotional endurance and emotional fitness aspect of climbing the everest what are your thoughts there right so so the next bottleneck was of course the emotional bit and that is very connected to family emotional mein sara kuch aa gaya your family has come in your relationships and everything else has come into play now so wo kaisa bana fir so for example kaisa ho raha tha na ki i was going on these long expeditions some of these expeditions were 30 days 35 days and i would realize by the 20th day i was getting extremely homesick like super homesick i would think about my father i would be like yaar he could pass away any time and you know for example i remember in october 2013 uh, i during the diwali time i was uh, uh, doing a climb of about 35 days uh, this was in nepal uh, this was my pre everest expedition and i was there and my father was his health had taken a little bit of a beating around that same time and there was on the mountain and i submitted my first mountain we were supposed to submit three mountains so i submitted my first mountain and i did ex extremely well like i was kick ass again main apne aap ko pom pom nahi kar raha hu main main pehle bhi you know audience ke liye bata dene wala hu main ek main ek below average mountaineer hu to bhale aapne mujhe bulaya aur aap mujhe podcast you know kar rahe ho but main you know almost below average mountaineer hu that is modesty kuntal that is serious modesty also because the way uh, you have done it uh, With full style and full flair, <laughs> with your championing the cause of. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I i could i am i can see every every of that you know characteristic in you that is going to put you on top of everest and bring you back down safely you are ready we were there so usne wo bola that gave me a lot of you know like ab yaar main ready hu yaar internally mujhe bahut hi ho gaya but yet i was feeling extremely homesick i am like diwali aa raha hai this could be my last diwali with my father if i don't go home any passes away and so many things were going on in my head and i am like घर जाना चाहिए यार अभी सो इमेजिन आई स्टिल हैव टू माउंटेन्स टू क्लाइम एंड येट आई डिसाइडेड टू गो होम आई यू नो सेट डाउन टू टीम एन आई सेट आई एम आई एम हैप्पी यू सेट अब मैं अगले साल एवरेस्ट आऊंगा बट नाउ आई हैव टू गो होम आई हैव टू बी विद माई फादर एंड आई केम होम माई फादर ऑफकोर्स वॉज स्टिल अलाइव ऑफ सेवन ईयर्स पोस्ट दैट ही पास्ट अवे इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन येट आई केम होम एंड वेन आई केम होम आफ्टर टेन और फिफ्टीन डेज आई रियलाइज दैट आई एम वेरी इमोशनली एम एक्सट्रीमली वीक I'm super, super weak. How am I going to last on Everest, which is a 65-day long expedition? Yeah, I'm. 20 days, I'm. 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 I'
and i feel that was a turning point october 2013 i think at that point i decided now something that i tell about myself is that i'm a little extreme person from everything that i do and you don't I, have to tell that you're living a life that's a testimony to that <laughs> so i'm either on this side or either i'm on that side like i can't do something in moderation so when i dis- i i was trying to think of solutions of how can i get emotionally fit here right because my emotional fitness is now what is going to keep me alive on everest mental or physical mere paas aa gaya hai abhi abhi ye cheez mein mujhe zyada fight karne ki zarurat nahi hai but emotionally main fit nahi hu aur main emotionally fit nahi hu to mujhe jana nahi chahiye ya to fir main emotionally fit ho ke hi ja sakta hu par jana to 2014 mein hi hai to ab main kya kar sakta hu so then a thought came into my mind that how would i detach myself from my family emotionally altogether like ek hi chhat ke niche rahenge but we'll have no relationship like zero relationship no physical no mental no relationship from any angle whatsoever that's extreme that's that's was super and you extreme. did that and i did that and i did that and for the next 6 months i said ab thoda try to karte hai na koi I, I, right, emotional emotional fitness तो now you are in like such a zone no जहां कोई ब्लू प्रिंट नहीं है जहां जहां तो अब हम ऐसी चीज की बात कर रहे हैं ना जो तो कोई समझता भी नहीं है पूरे वर्ल्ड में एग्जैक्टली exactly, मतलब मेंटल फिटनेस में तो स्टिल यू कुड यूज योर बॉडी एज अ टूल टू पुश योर सेल्फ फर्दर अहेड व्हाट डू यू डू इन दिस इमोशनल फिटनेस स्पेस आई आई एम जनरली ऑन द साइड वेयर आई आई एम नॉट समवन हु कैन or at least i was always someone who could not express his emotions really well and here people can judge you people can say whatever but you don't have any other way to operate i mean it's just an idea that you thought of yep. and you're like this is what i think is making sense to me right now yep. and you have no other thing that you can equate it with compare it with and analyze and decide and all of that process cannot take place nothing, here nothing nothing right so you have to go with that and i'm sure a lot of people would have judged you for that would have called out you uh called you out for you know, that bollywood ka song hai logo ka kaam hai kehna i i don't give a flying f about people honestly so if if you have to climb everest you have to have you know very different mentality uh i did care about what my family thought right so i i told them that look i'm not doing this because i get some joy in you know giving you know torture to you folks so were you so, living in the same house yes but i also have to think about my safety on the mountain i am going to do this ये मेरा ड्रीम है मैं करने वाला हूं आपको भी पता है अब द ओनली वे आई कैन सी हियर इज दैट आई हैव टू बी इमोशनली स्टेबल एंड फॉर दैट आई कॉन्ट हैव अ रिलेशनशिप एंड सो आई डिटैच माई सेल्फ फ्रॉम देम एंड आई ट्राइड फॉर सिक्स मंथ एंड आई ऑनेस्टली बिकेम एक्सट्रीमली इमोशनली स्ट्रॉन्ग ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम आई वेंट ऑन एवरेस्ट ऑफकोर्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन का एक्सपीडिशन कैंसल हो गया विच मीन्स that the experiment that was supposed to be only 6 months long now went into 1 year 6 months long because then i went in 2015 2015 expedition also got cancelled because of the earthquake so the 1 year 6 1 one month 1 one year 6 month experiment turned into a 2 year 6 6 month and experiment and you were distant from your family all this while and getting more and more distant and the only semblance of relationship that i had was with a piece of rock कुंतल डिवोर्स कैसे नहीं हुआ इस सारे सीन में हार्ट्स ऑफ टू योर वाइफ मैन यस सो आई थिंक लाइक आई टेल दिस ऑन एवरी सिंगल टॉक वेर माय वाइफ एंड माय मदर आर टू ऑफ द स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट वेमेन आई नो ऑन द प्लानेट विदाउट हुज सैक्रिफाइसिस विदाउट हुज सपोर्ट विदाउट हुज अनकंडीशनल सेल्फलेस लव तो यहाँ मेरा तो सब कुछ सेल्फिश था पर यहां सब कुछ सेल्फलेस हो रहा था वो साइड से मेरे ड्रीम के लिए राइट right? मेरी माँ का ड्रीम नहीं है मेरी वाइफ का ड्रीम नहीं है मेरा ड्रीम है सो दे वर यू नो एज यू वो सेंग दे वर बेरिंग द ब्रंट ऑफ माय ड्रीम नाउ तो देस नो पहले तो थोड़ा यू नो फ्रस्ट्रेशन भी था मैं फ्रस्ट्रेशन निकालता था या ट्रेनिंग नहीं हो रहा है गुस्सा या झगड़े जो भी हो रहे थे अब तो वो भी नहीं है ही नहीं कुछ भी कनेक्शन ही नहीं है राइट सो यू वर जस्ट नॉट टॉकिंग जस्ट ऑफ कनेक्शन ही ऑफ हो गया है टॉकिंग राइट बट टॉकिंग मीन्स हाँ क्या खाने में बनाया हाँ मेंटल लेवल इमोशनल लेवल पे कोई टॉक्स ही नहीं है कुछ भी नहीं आप करो भी मत बताओ भी मत मुझे डैड का भी जो टेक केयर करना था दैट टेक टेकिंग केयर वॉज इज वेरी मैकेनिकल राइट इमेजिन सींग योर पेरेंट डाई इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू डे आफ्टर डे आफ्टर डे एंड यू कांट डू एनीथिंग अबाउट इट बट दैट्स द रियालिटी ऑफ लाइफ आई थिंक 
because it's all a perception and illusion we think that we can do something about it but eventually we cannot and that is emotional fitness that is what a lot of spiritual gurus and these books teach you and that is actually very true when you see it to the core of it because my father also uh, went through a health condition uh, about 3 years ago just before the lockdown and uh, his body was immobile at that point and he was sort of a, was a paralytic attack of sorts and then you realize that however much you want to put in you actually cannot do anything mm. and making peace with you cannot do anything because ladai tab tak ye jab tak aapko lagta hai aap kuch kar sakte ho aap kuch badal sakte ho but jab aapko samajh aa jayegi na ki yaar ye actually mere haath mein hai nahi right and when you surrender to that idea not meaning to say that you don't take your actions you don't take him to the hospital you don't do what is needed you do all of that but yet surrender to the idea that it is not in your hands and being yeah. be, in fact becoming aware of the very idea that it is not in your hands it never was it never can be yep so that is i think emotional fitness yep yep so so for me finally in 2016 i submitted and in you know the surrendering point i'll tell you in 2016 a very very sim- similar incident happened to me i think it was in 2015 because that is when the first time i walked through the khumbu ice fall now khumbu ice fall is this maze of massive ice blocks okay it's a 2 km long maze and there's a going joke around in the mountaineering world that every time you cross the khumbu ice fall you are playing the game of russian roulette okay so things can crash down upon on you any time and things are the glacier is moving whole host of things are kind of going on in khumbu ice fall but you know for the first time you don't know you don't know what's going to happen you are so nervous you are so anxious you are so jittery and whole host of cocktail of emotions in your mind and as soon as i started walking i think at one point i stood there and i'm like mai bahut mai kya control karne ki try kar raha hu look at the freaking mountain it is like infinity times bigger than me if it wanted to kill me it will do that in any instant what am i trying to control my life is not in my hands right now and that was the moment where i was like itna epiphany one i am like i'm just going to surrender like you know complete absolute surrender to the mountain to the nature doesn't mean maine mera dimag side mein rakh diya right that mm. is not what you know surrender means absolutely right so i still have that situational awareness i'm still listening to the signs and the signals that the mountain is giving i'm still trusting my gut i'm still trusting my instinct and all those things are still at a very heightened level at a level where i had never felt any of those senses before in my life where you can like sab kuch feel ho raha ab jaise har cell body ka exist kar raha hai but you are also surrendering to the mountain at the same time you are like my fate is in your hands i think the idea of death brings you that much more closer, closer. to life i i truly feel so i was reading you know this epiphany happened to me a few years ago when i was reading some stats about people dying on the roads you know there are more num- more chances of you dying on the road than on so there was some comparison some study some research i was studying now from that research i was like my life i cross a road and i could just be gone Dead, gone i could just be gone i am in an elevator i could, I could just be gone. gone i'm in my home i just go to my bathroom and there's some water spilled over there i could just be gone. gone so what am i thinking about so much my life literally is not in my hands and there are gazillion other factors at play there is maybe my destiny there is the circumstances there is so many powers at play that your role is very limited in that play like you said that you were situationally aware you were doing what needed to be done but yet being in the awareness that it is so much more bigger than you yep. and it's it's just out of your uh, perception you know jo jab hona hai wo tab hona hai right. isko actual mein feel karna na actual mein apne being mein utarna jo clarity wahan se emerge hoti hai na that is i think mind blowing yep, yep. yeah death really brings you so much closer, closer to life it makes you so much more aware and alive in that point that yaar ye to kabhi bhi ho jayega mere sath to what am i really making most of what i am doing right doing. now if i stand for creating an impact am i doing that with 100% of my gusto if i stand for let's say staying fit or if i stand for taking care of my family or building something or protecting something am i standing for that 100% then the question comes into play you know wo tab tak mujhe lagta hai aap 100% de hi nahi paoge jab tak aap us idea ke close nahi jaoge nahi that jaoge. yeah that you are so much smaller <laughs> here in the great scheme of things, things. and then mere chote se role mein main kitna excel kar raha hu wo meri journey hai 
I think that is a, a powerful insight, uh, Kuntal. Thank you so much for sharing it. Going forward, Kuntal, I also want to talk about the financial aspect of climbing Mount Everest. I'm sure you would have spoken at different platforms about it. There's a lot that is said about the expense that incurs when you are setting right. out for Mount Everest expedition. Right. So I want you to briefly touch that topic also and tell us that, you know, they say that everything is possible in my life. Mein. Right. But is Everest a dream that is possible for everyone financially? Right. So <laughs> I'll tell a funny story to start with. I still remember 2015, I think I was on a different expedition. I was coming home. And my, my my wife, so financial insecurity is also like a big part of, you know, some of these expeditions, right? So my wife is calling me and she's like, Kuntal, there's only 34 rupees in your bank account. Like, I can't even use a debit card. Se payment karu, kya karu? So, you know, like a lot of people think that, like, you know, Everest, like, a bahut paisa banaoge, ye wo, but honestly... Like mountaineering is an extremely, extremely expensive passion to pursue. Uh, and yes, I had a fair bit of savings. Uh, I worked for 10 years for a US based company and I made a fair amount of money and I had a fair amount of savings. But I quickly realized as I went through a journey of training for the first four or five years, I, I ran through pretty much all my savings. Uh, luckily in 2014, the company that I was working for, uh, for almost 14 years, they are the ones who sponsored my first Everest climb. Like in 2010, I, when I decided I'm going to climb Everest, I first called my CEO, Ron, and I told him, Hey, I'm going to quit the job. And he's like, why? So I'm like, I want to climb Everest. And he's like, Kuntal, why don't you go to the moon? He was of course being sarcastic. <laughs> he was like, Ye kya karne wala hai? types, you know, and then I'm like, no, I'm serious. So he's like, but Kuntal, then who's going to pay your bills, right? Like, who is going to do everything for you? So I'm like, I didn't think about that. I don't, I have some savings. I'll use that up. He's like, I say, chalta hai. Like, so he kind of talked me out of it. And he said that don't run the show. Don't be the CEO of the company. Don't be the director of India operations. What you can do instead is you can become the junior software engineer in our company again. If you want to work for six months, work for six months for us. You are a very valuable asset to us. You are someone who we have been working for for more than a decade. We really would like you to be with us. Uh, and then for six months, you can go take time off and go your, do your training. I'm like, this sounds great. You know, win-win for both of us. So then I kind of, you know, went in that direction where I was working as a consultant for them on like one-off projects and everything. And then I could take time off whenever I wanted. And luckily, this allowed me to just make enough money that I was able to pay my bills and take care of my responsibilities. But I didn't have the money because I ran through all my savings, just as he said that you don't know what you're doing. So today, I'm very thankful to him for, you know, kind of putting me in this direction and helping me out when, you know, things were not really very clear in my mind. Uh, 2014, he had seen my entire journey of 12, 13 years of my entire transformation of my passion about mountaineering and everything. And he said, Kuntal, I want you to put my company's flag on the top of Everest. We will sponsor you. So he cut me a check for 75,000 US dollars. And that also included one training climb and that included all my wow. gear. So typically an Everest climb lasts for about 65 days. And today the cost is around 35 lakh rupees. The permit cost will range anywhere from 12, I would say, $15,000. So what's that? Like $15,000 is the new permit cost that will like now be enforced. Nearly from, 13 lakhs, 12, yeah. 13 lakhs. Yeah, yeah, 12, 13 lakhs. So that's the permit fee that you pay to Nepal government. This is just a piece of paper. That's the cost. Then you are going to pay for a Sherpa guide, which is about another six seven thousand dollars so that is that sherpa guides fee for supporting you and for helping you out on 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 the mountain then we're going to buy oxygen which is about another what five hundred dollars per bottle and you need about 12 13 bottles between you and your sherpa so another six seven thousand dollars there and then your 65 days worth of food of you know what the fees that you pay to the guides on the mountain who fix the ropes on the mountain who keep the mountain clean who do you know whole host of mountain management you pay them the money and then for the agency, for your, you know, food, for your everything, right? There are camps set up at, at all the camps, right? There's, there's tents and there's water and whole host of things, right? So 
overall it could easily end up being about 35 lakh rupees at the end of the day uh, for a everest expedition and then on top of that add the money that you will spend in buying gear right you require extremely specialized gear now the suit that i wore if you buy the animal version of that suit that suit itself is about a lakh rupees and then your boots your boots are about lakh rupees and then you have specialized sleeping bags you have specialized crampons you have your bags and you have whole host of other gear the gear itself is going to cost you anywhere around 5 to 7 lakh rupees so now you add to that that's about 40 lakh rupees already there right and then we are talking about one attempt right imagine if you have to have three attempts like i did or four attempts like i like i did now you're looking at an a crore or a more than that more than that right so that's a lot of money luckily i had sponsor the first time uh the second time i ended up crowd funding so i didn't have any money so i went online and i like wrote a post and people from all over the world my well wishers my friends my followers even anonymous donors i got everywhere from 50 rupees to 500 rupees to 5000 to 50000 to 5 lakhs i got all, all sorts of money and i was able to raise about 22 lakhs and go the second time and then for my third attempt i i kind of thought that i got sponsored uh and then it ethically didn't make sense for me to go back to my boss and say sponsor me again right he literally 50% of the marketing budget of the entire company that year was dedicated to me it's a small company right? it's not not like a big massive you know uh, fortune 100 or a 500 company it was a small startup and they dedicated right. all their money to me so i didn't went to them i did crowdfunding and then i'm like i have already asked all my friends also they also all donated where do i go next i'm like what do i do next i i'm going to go so then i decided to break my bank there were some of these last bits of savings i had that i had decided that i would never touch in my life and i decided it's time to touch those so i took those savings out i took some loan from my friend or not my friend but from my brother and then i took a loan from the agency itself and i managed the third climb and uh, i submitted uh, but one thing that i can share from my experience and look i'm not going to stand here and tell people to not climb everest because of cost reasons right uh i did it and i'm not going to tell anyone not to do it uh but what tip that i can give people is uh is that don't take a loan if you can i took the loan and it took me 4 years to repay that loan back to my agency and to my brother yes it was my brother i could have easily said mai wapas nahi dunga tujhe and he would have not minded it but that is not my ethics those are not my values and it took me 4 years because i didn't have like i didn't have like that job from 2010 where i was making shit ton of money right i was working as a junior software engineer making the money that i was making in 2001 perhaps even lesser money than i was making 2001 so it's not making i was making enough to just pay my bills and then to have a loan on my head and to have that pressure and then i repeat the mistake in lotse where i take another loan so combination of two loans for 5 years it was almost as if talwar latak rahi thi mere sir pe every night every day you have to think ke main kaise repay karne wala hu and then slowly slowly thoda 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 save kar rahe ho yahan se wahan se har jagah se save kar rahe ho aur usko repay karne ki try kar rahe ho dono loans ko so luckily you know i was able to repay those loans off and one thing that i realized never take a loan never ever ever take a loan to climb a mountain and i have so many horror stories right like uh, in 2016 i had these three or four friends uh, who un- unfortunately ended up dying on the mountain and one of the friend was a truck driver from from bengal and he mortgaged his entire house he mortgaged every last piece of jewelry there was to come and climb everest he died and left the family in a situation where the kids didn't even have the money to pay their school fees mm. or to have daily food on their table that's how bad you know that's it, hard it yeah. it can you know kind of get you know when you hear stories like this but one thing that i've learned from this journey is gratitude when i stood on top of everest people ask me this question all the time jab bhi everest ko first time dekha samit ko kya feeling aayi yes when i saw everest for the first time that that first thought in the mind was fuck i did it man did it man ho gaya 
लाइफ का सबसे बड़ा ड्रीम था डन फिनिश दैट एग्जिलेशन वॉज देयर दैट जॉय वॉज देयर ऑल ऑफ दैट वॉज देयर बट आई थिंक वंस वो फीलिंग दैट वॉज अ वेरी ट्रांसियंट मोमेंट इट्स अ वेरी फ्लीटिंग फीलिंग ऑल्सो वंस दैट फीलिंग वेंट अवे आई थिंक द फर्स्ट फीलिंग वॉज थैंक यू टू द माउंटेन थैंक यू टू एवरी वन हु वॉज पार्ट ऑफ माई लाइफ हु वॉज पार्ट ऑफ माई जर्नी बिकॉज विदाउट दैम आई वुड हैव नेवर मेड इट टू द टॉप ऑनेस्टली सो वॉज जस्ट एक्सट्रीम ग्रेटिट्यूड and i have learned that and i when i come back home i'm like yaar theek hai yaar acha hi chal raha hai yaar mujhe to apne it's not like i'm fighting for my next meal or i'm fighting for a roof on my head or i'm fighting for like you know clothing on i'm not fighting for any of yaar acha hi to hai sab kuch why is it your you know? perspective towards life shifted you know jin choti cheezon mein you used to find certain mistakes or certain uh, errors and fallacies now you started seeing it from a standpoint of gratitude and gratitude does make everything looks more beautiful you know it's just a perspective shift yep. so going to the everest climbing the everest summiting the everest that made you shed some of your fears insecurities doubts and made you this person who is now full of gratitude but coming back from everest into your city life where you have a family where you still have your mortgages so to speak to pay <laughs> what are the other fears and insecurities that came up because of this journey so the mortgages are done luckily so so that you know material you know aspect you know i was able to take care of it but i do think there's one big insecurity or i'm not say insecurity it's like just a thought process as i get older and as the younger generation also starts coming in and this is such a more social media generation and and a generation where you know there's so much attachment to your name to your reputation to your fame or to what you are doing all the time there's so much attachment to that is this constant thought process of how am i going to stay relevant in in these times right so how do you stay relevant at the end of the day i have passion around veganism and i i want to continue talking about it i want to continue raising awareness about it or or my dementia awareness bit from you know my learnings from my father that i want to talk about it or just this concept uh of find your own everest which is something you know a theme of all my talks or everything that I, you know i want to do where i want to go and introduce people to the mountains and through that medium hopefully inspire them to find their own personal everest it doesn't have to be climbing everest that was my everest that mm. right? each one of us has our own everest our own everest. individual everest so, yeah so all of these things but how do i stay relevant right this race where i have to continue climbing mountains right abhi agar maine mountain nahi climb kiya to podcast ka invites nahi milega तो नए टॉक्स में कौन बुलाएगा घड़ी घड़ी किसको सेम एवरेस्ट का स्टोरी सुनना है राइट अभी मैं अलग माउंटेन क्लाइम करके आया तो मुझे उसका यू नो स्टोरी के लिए बुलाएंगे मैंने डेनाली क्लाइम किया मैंने एखन का वो क्लाइम किया अब लोग मुझे वापस बुलाएंगे या मैंने कुछ नया क्लाइम किया तो आई मे बी यू नो गेट सम ब्रांड एंड एंडोर्समेंट्स और यू नो सम ऑफ एनी थिंग राइट टू बेसिकली जस्ट द फैक्ट ऑफ बींग रेलिवेंट द जस्ट द फैक्ट दैट पीपल मुझे याद रख रहे आई थिंक that is something that i am definitely dealing with at at a certain level and look didn't just go on top of everest and become a zen monk right i'm i'm not claiming that i'm enlightened now i have some nirvana or something kuch bhi nahi hua right yes i've gone through a 14 year old journey and i am a very different person today but i i am a human at the end of the day i have my insecurities i have my own issues and i think one of them definitely is in this new world how do i stay relevant and how do i still continue contributing and adding value to people's lives so i think that's something that i am trying to kind of figure out and and i'm trying to figure out what can i do kuntal what is the key to happiness i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no i i i know always listen to your wife just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but you i think never listen to your wife what are you saying that on sounding like such a fake no no so <laughs> um i do think uh, i'm not going to claim to have an answer but i do think uh, having a sense of purpose definitely definitely helps quite a bit uh giving back to the community in some fashion i feel that also uh is will help i feel basically doing things that are while i'm selfish and i'm very very self centered i feel these are things that truly bring me happiness Yes climbing Everest climbing mountains is a very deep personal journey but I also uh, I also do something which is which gives me immense happiness for example I run community hikes 
I've been running community hikes now for the last eight nine years. Okay, these hikes are where I run the hike for free. Today there are tons of agencies in Mumbai that will run a hike for three thousand rupees per person per day. I have gone with so many of those agencies. I did uh, <laughs> Annapurna Base Camp uh, about five years ago and went with one of those agencies. I know what you're talking about that it's become a business because people have started looking to the mountains to find their solace and peace. So of course, a huge business has come in. In fact, in the last five six years, so many new so companies many. have come in. Seven eight years ago, there used to be one or two odd companies. Those were doing this, but the last eight years, so many new. Every time I go on to search for this, there are hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of them now. Yeah. Right. So my so my thing is still like, am I saying that I'm some saint? No, I'm not a saint. Right. So I'm also going to run paid hikes. I'm also going to run paid expeditions, but throughout the year, I run these community hikes where I do these hikes without any expectation in return. it's like you know concept that is from the jain philosophy which is called seva which is which which essentially means selfless service and my goal through these hikes is to introduce people to the mountains and introduce them to the beauty of the mountains in hopes that they will also conserve the mountains they will also uh, it's it's kind of you know trying to be a steward of these mountains or trying to be steward of some of these communities where where i can introduce people to the mountains i can teach them some things about leave no trace you know pick you know don't litter how can you think about these mountains how can you think about training preserving uh, the resources and and just overall then them also looking at rest of the world as a very beautiful place and that how can we conserve this this is the only planet we have so that is kind of you know my very small bit uh where i'm doing something without any expectations in return and that is giving me so much happiness as much as on the outside world it looks like that you're doing it for somebody you're giving to somebody more than that i think internally it's an act that you do for your own self because it gratifies you on such a deep level on the deepest levels of your being uh it just makes you feel so much more happy and so much more uh you know in touch with everything else that you have in your life at that point it's just a beautiful feeling to give back yeah those are great mantras to cultivate happiness in your life from this conversation kuntal we are almost nearing to the end i want to play a game with you now so i'm going to say a few words and you have to tell what is the first thing that comes to your mind first word is we just talked about it death zone definitely scary <laughs> definitely definitely scary i mean i would in and out i would say oxygen cylinder life <laughs> sherpas camaraderie base camp coke the summit the summit um uh, the summit wow the dream snow snow love dead bodies dead bodies This is a very this is a very tricky one. I I still remember seeing my first dead body uh when I was climbing. Uh again this this I didn't see any dead bodies on the south side when I climbed the mountain for the first time. But when I am climb mountain for the second time from the Chinese side, the the entire ridge on the Chinese side is littered with dead bodies. And China doesn't allow dead bodies to be brought down to be because cleaned. it is too risky. Yeah. Because many sherpas are required and it's a very difficult mission. and the the terrain on the chinese side is much harder so i still remember four and a half hours of walking through the dead of the night uh, mingma and i reached on the the northeast ridge and then for the next 10 minutes it's so dark it's so dark out there that if i put my hand like literally here i can't see my fingers it's that pitch dark in the night you 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 are turning on your headlamp and you just have that headlamp and you can only that see the next vision. step yeah. that's pretty much it and i remember walking for 15 minutes and then turning my headlamp on the right and there's the first dead body and it's in such a worse condition the back is broken the legs are broken so the dead body is entirely disfigured the mundi like you know is like thoda teda it's, it's a scary it's like, sight it was super scary the first thing that i told mingma is let's stay focused let's climb through the night Mingma was counting dead bodies. He counted eleven. I was least bothered about that from that <laughs> point onwards. I was like, let's stay focused because I don't want to die here because then it will become like a marker point. You know, who, 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 who
और वो फ्लोरोसेंट येलो जैकेट पहन के और उस पॉइंट पे हम रेस्ट करेंगे दैट इज वॉट विल बिकम ऑफ मी और आई बिकम जस्ट सम स्टेटिस्टिक इन अ न्यूज पेपर सॉरी आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू बिकम दैट सो आई वुड से डेड बॉडी फोकस लाइक यू वुड हैव इफ आई वुड हैव सेट डेड डेड बॉडी फोकस पीपल वुड हैव बीन लाइक क्या बोल रहा है सो यू नो आई वॉन्ट टू earned. <laughs> kudos kudos to your uh, insightful experiences that you have shared uh, and yeah there's some really scary stories about everest about the dead bodies about the death zone uh, yeah and still having that perseverance to pull through is incredible i have massive respect for anybody who does climb the mountains and at the same time respects the mountain and keeps them in the highest possible regards of reverence that's what i think needs to be done because like you said mountains allow you to climb them right. and that's the only truth now we are coming to the last question kuntal and the last question is you have seen material success in your life you've earned money you've lost money you have followed passion you have figured out your uh, mathematics around your passion amidst all of this what is your definition of success what is my definition of success i'm never thought about it but let me try sharing a a view point um sure achieving goals is super important for me uh climbing mountains is super important for me uh money as i said i'm not going to discount the importance of money money is important it allows me to enjoy you know some of these you know adventures and all of these things but i do think uh at at some point i found myself chasing goals too much and when there were no goals in my life i was starting it it felt like an emotional emptiness i was struggling quite a bit during those times and i didn't have goals and i realized that i'm too goal driven and that i don't want to be goal driven anymore yes having goals in my life is still you know important to me but i don't want to be goal driven and uh, i think that's where i kind of started changing how i perceive things or or how i am living my life and what success means to me i feel today kuntal is very different than who the kuntal of 2016 or 2019 or even the kuntal of 2009 and it is the same for all of us right our experiences shape us quite significantly and they make us very different persons uh, but the kuntal of today views the world very differently i wake up the day with only single thought in my mind which is can i end this day being a little better version of myself and being a slightly better human than i started out to be and that is what my definition of success is honestly can i just be a better human being at the end of the day can i be better version of myself not comparing myself to anyone okay i'm i'm here what new did i learn what other experiences i had what did i give back what did i do what are those things that give me true joy and happiness and am i doing them and am i growing as a human i really love this you know sentence that sir edmund hillary said uh, after a failure at one of the mountains he said that mountain you can't grow but i can grow as a human being so i will grow as a human being and i will come back and climb you so i honestly feel to me it is all about can i grow as a human as a person and end the day slightly better than what i started and then that's it that's, that's all it. success is for you that that's pretty much it. it just simplifies my life so much that i'm no longer chasing goals that the goal itself is can i be a better human being at the end of the day as simple as that mm. What is your definition of success is my standard question to all of my guests and I asked this question because 3 years ago uh, somebody asked me this question that what is your definition of success and that question as much as it is outwardly 
about all the things that exist in your world it's such a deep question for internal reflection for you to really see that where is my belief system coming in from where is my idea of success coming from am i living on to somebody else's idea of success for me is it a borrowed dream and all of these deeper reflection and once you start simplifying these answers i think a new version of you emerges out so uh, it's it's a beautiful question for one to take their journey within and that's the concept of this very show so kuntal thank you so much for being on the journey within podcast it was such a delight talking to you and i think we are still not done with <laughs> even 50% of the things that we discussed, we discussed. earlier <laughs> that we're going to be talking about so i think i'm going to call you back again on the journey within soon and all the best for your uh, future expeditions thank you and and all the best to you as well with this you know journey that you are on thank you thank you This was such a powerful episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching it. Click here for our other episodes and uh, do subscribe, like, comment and share this episodes with your friends and family. Master your inner world with the Journey Within podcast with me Shobha Rana.